Alright, so good afternoon everybody. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we are modifying and programming this Kenwood. It's a 281 model. Um, this is a model I currently have in my diesel and a lot of people choose um, to use to transmit and receive on the uh, race radio frequencies that we use for just off-road racing. Um, in general, people use them for play too. They're a great source for communication uh, from car to car radios. Just in general, they have a huge transmitting um, range because they are on the uh, ham band. Um, so today we're gonna go ahead and open this one up um, and modify it because currently when they sell these, they're not meant to transmit on the 144 to 170 something megahertz. Um, the general race radio frequencies are in the 150 band. Um, so to operate on those, we have to modify the radio. And then after that, we're gonna go over programming it and test it out and make sure everything works. So on this one, there is a screw that normally goes right here. I've already removed it. Same with the other side. Oh, you just have to get the uh, this cover. It peels back over these two mounting bosses. Um, kind of hard to do with one hand, so I'm gonna set up the tripod. So as you can see, you can just take, pop it up over, and it pops off. To modify this, you're gonna go in here. So right here, there's a series of four resistors. The camera doesn't pick it up too well with my light, um, but it is resistor R768 that we will be pulling out. And to do that, some people just go ahead and just break it off. Um, I've got the soldering iron here that I'm gonna use. And then from there, heat up the solder that's currently on there and just pry off the little resistor. Don't wanna damage this connector, so got a little bit of blue tape to hold it back. So it's not in our way. We don't run into risk of hitting it with the soldering iron. So let's get to it. So I don't have a pair of tweezers that normal people do, but I have a screwdriver that gets in here in between the resistors. So we're just gonna heat it up and pry a little bit. Oh no shit. little tiny spot on the end of my index finger that is the resistor we removed all right so now we're going to peel off our blue tape and make sure this is tucked back in there nice just going to snap on our cover nice and tight and we're going to put our screws back in To. So to test this setup, we have the radio, we have it hooked up to an antenna, which is right there. That's like the normal size antenna that we use, it's actually it came off my old Ranger. We got the upper leads hooked up, and they're hooked up to this Razor battery, it was convenient because the seat was already out of it. And then we have it set to Weatherman. Now over, over here we have one of the bow fang, bow fang, whatever you want to call it, handhelds. It's also already programmed and on Weatherman. So we're gonna give it a try and hope for the best. Testing one, two, one, two. All right, so it looks like it can transmit just fine. Let's make sure it receives. Testing one, two, one, two. Looks like everything works perfect. Now it's time to uh, program everything up. So to program from the Kenwoods, all you need is this sweet little cable off Amazon. It's uh, $14, I think, and it'll do a ton of different Kenwood radios. It will not do the TK790H, um, the 110 watt radios everybody has. Those have a different style connectors, or different style connector, but most of them are this style connector. Not even sure what it's called. Pretty sure I should know that. And then it's got USB on the other side to plug into your computer. Now you can manually program these radios by sitting there with the mic and punching in numbers and trying to punch in names. Um, the lettering system is like the old school style of what do they call that T9 where you got to push it four times to get a D if you want it or whatever. Um, that just takes forever. I'd rather use the laptop in this method. Um, you can use, there is a software specific for each Kenwood model. 
Um, that's what I used previously, but to do the bow fangs or bow fangs, the handhelds, those use a uh, free software called Chirp. Chirp will also do a number of radios. It'll do the rugged brand of the uh, handhelds. It'll do um, some Kenwoods, a bunch of different models, and it does the 281. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my diesel. I am going to download the program, or I'm going to open up the program using Chirp. I'm going to download that file, and then I'm just going to be lazy and just upload it to there because we're all running on the same frequency, so it's nice to just have the generic frequencies located in everybody's uh, radio. So we're going to go on, go on and do that. All right, so I just downloaded it from my diesel. It was a little weird because as I was editing the Kenwood, in um, on my computer, it was doing it real time and automatically already saving it in the video or in the radio. So as I would like move channels around because I had some channels I wanted to fix, I moved them around. They were instantly moved on the radio itself. Never done that before. Um, so we'll see. We've got our it plugged into the headphone jack. We're gonna power the radio up, and then this is the one actually from my diesel. We are going to go over to radio download from radio and then you need to make sure you have your com port selected that's your usb port which one it is um chirp's pretty good about automatically detecting it i just i don't know if you can see it, but there's already the 11 there um you need to check the vendor so we've got it at kenwood and then the model it's just tm281 we hit okay operates in live mode oh that's something i didn't check beforehand so let's see we've got all these up and over there we are going to go over and just select all the ones that I already have pre-programmed. I'm going to copy it, Control C. I'm going to go over to the other radio, click this one, Control V, and bam, they're all up there. So now when we go over here, we're going to switch to MR, which is for memory. And then that's the preloaded station, and now we have it. All our different radio stations. Let's make sure everything still works. Let's go over to Weatherman. Panel mode. Let's see. All right, so we got the handheld. We're going to test it. Testing one, two, one, two. Everything works just as advertised. That's awesome. So now we're going to switch over. We got these uh, Baofeng. Bofang, they're the UV5R, is the model number. Uh, they look just like this. Um, normally they come battery and radio separated in the package for shipping, but I already took them out to get them all charged up so they're ready to go. They come with this factory, it's a little stubby antenna. Um, it works pretty good and it's excellent to use if you're like walking around in a casino or something or at an event. I mean, obviously you want the short one, you can fit it in your pocket, it's not poking you or anything. But then on Amazon for about 10 bucks, you can get these uh, longer ones. Now, I'm not going to take it out of the package because I don't need to use it, but as you can see, it is significantly longer. Um, these increase the range. I don't know how much they help with the transmitting ability, but they definitely help with the receiving ability, which is what these things are great for. Because even though they're only 5 watts to go a couple miles, um, they can still receive from the big radios that are transmitting at, what, 20, 30 miles or whatever their range is. You're on a budget and this is all you can afford this $20 radio that's not a problem with the big antenna you just get out there and you can still hear where everyone's going what everyone's doing um worst case if you get separated you know where they're going or if you can hear them talking maybe they're coming back to look for you you know not to deviate from the course that everyone else is going on just really useful radio i think i paid another ten dollars for one of these programming cables when i first started out i bought them for about i think it was four or five dollars um all these are is a USB to, you got these two different size jacks on there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, you just open up the side. It's usually a little tough the first time because I think they glue it shut on some of them. That one wasn't. And then it just plugs right in. So now we're going to plug the USB into the computer and do it just like the other radio. All right, so we've got it all plugged in. We're going to go ahead and turn the radio on. Uh, note, it doesn't make any noises when it's plugged in, even if you do have the volume all the way up. So just remember that. We're going to go over here. We're going to do radio, download from radio. 
I'm gonna change this, the vendor back to Baofeng. If you have the rugged that's the same one as this, there is a rugged option in here. Uh, Baofeng, and we want the UV5R, where are you? As you can see here, you got the little red light flashing. It says it's cloning in process. And it'll download us a new one. So normally, I just steal a master list, which I was going to do. But I think since these are all these radios are going to the same person, I am just going to control V from my last setup so that his base radio and the handhelds are the same. Um, there's some other settings you can go into here, um, like advanced settings. What is it? Oh, other settings. There we go. Oh, there's a 6 plus power on message and the regular power on message. I make them say the same thing. So for these, I'm just going to write the customer's name in here. I go radio, upload to radio. We'll see. You can see it's blinking a green light. That means it's uploading. And we'll see what happens. See, we get this power on message right now. And we'll have to change a couple other things in here. I like to go to... We want MF, MDF A. We're going to hit menu again. It'll drop down the arrow. We're going to change that to name. We'll hit the menu again. It goes back up. We'll go to B. Hit the menu button. Change that down to name. And then so now when we exit here, there we go. It's on Fluger 1. And if you hit the A and B button, That'll drop you down to the bottom. So right now we're on B, which is Weatherman. We'll go back up to A, which is Fluger. Uh, if you accidentally bump something, it'll take you to this is where it's just frequencies. You can hand enter. You can hand enter whatever frequency you want, and then you hit it back. So VFO stands for frequency, and then the MR is for memory. Um, don't ever hit this call button. It makes an annoying sound for a long period of time. All right, now that this radio is all done, we're going to turn it on. Channel mode. We're going to give it a test. Testing one, two, one, two. Looks like everything works perfectly, and that one's wrapped up. That's the short amount of time it takes to program these radios. It's super easy. The only hard part is finding the COM port sometimes in different software. Um, like the KPG44D is for the TK790 uh, 110 watt radios. That one you only have a selection of COM port 1 through 4. Sometimes, like this one, I'm plugging into, I only have three USB ports. I plug into one and it says I'm on COM port 12. The good part about that is if you go into the device manager of the computer, a lot of times you can find that COM port under uh, USB serial drivers and you can rename it as long as. There's an open slot. Usually you might be using COM port 1 or COM port 3 or something like that. The one that says COM port 12, you can rename it to, let's say, 2 or 4. And then you go in the software and rename it and say, look for COM port 4. But yeah, that about wraps up all the radio programming. I mean, it's super easy, super simple. The modding's easy. It's just a little tedious taking that one resistor out. But other than that, after you do that, and especially after you get one of these typed in, I mean, as you can see, I've got 30 frequencies, 34 different frequencies in there. Um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, one thing I forgot to mention that I learned from somebody is there. I have 10 weather stations programmed in here. Now, the purpose of those 10 weather stations are um, they're always transmitting weather data. So if you program those channels in, and let's say you're out in the middle of the desert, no one's picking up and you're curious if your radio is even working, you can tune into one of those weather channels. And obviously, if it starts playing the weather report, you know, your radio is working fine and it's receiving just fine you may still have a problem on transmitting but at least you know you can receive and hear other people um but like i said that's going to wrap up the video thanks for watching if you have any questions let me know and hope you guys have a good day <laughs>